What's up, world? It's Coach Banta again, coming at you guys. We're talking about week number five, day one of week number five. You'll notice that the colors on my chart are different. That signifies that we are entering into a different phase of our training. Traditionally, this is the week. Week five is when we get into the heart of our season. We've already had two uh, potential track meets or maybe even three depending on how the breakdowns go for our season. Um, this is traditionally our week where we do our park rock meet, which is a meet that we host every year. And what we do is we have unlimited entries in certain events and then limited in the field um, so that everybody can get a chance to compete. And usually what we do is we'll have uh, the events that are unlimited on the track will be our relay events so that every kid can get in a race. Um, and this is where basically every kid kind of gets the message sent that they're going to run a four by four. Every kid's going to do multiple events. You know, we're going to try to max them out in this first, um, you know, beginning of the major competition season. And the reason why we do that is because part of this, you have to understand, is that racing is training. And so we're going to use that park rock meet at the end of the week to be a uh, – a really good practice as well as a competition. And because we have unlimited entries in certain events, <clears throat> it allows our kids to compete in a number of different things. Now, obviously that's not happening at this moment. To the right, you'll notice that I've added in our weight room routine. When we get into the heart of our season, we typically, excuse me, we typically have um, a combination of lifts. So we'll have upper body activities to also go along with our lower body activities. And one of the reasons why we do this is because we want to make sure that we're doing the routines that we need to do and get the best bang for our buck. Now, typically, you'll notice here we've got bench press, squat, um, and then above we've got our power clean and snatch. So clean and snatch combo. So that's our entire weight room routine that we would use in our phase two. And again, we start off with the big bang workouts. So we're going to start off with power clean, bench press, and squat. And traditionally, we'll deadlift as well. Um, in a more modern version of this, we typically deadlift. And you'll notice then we do our push-ups and we do a bunch of other stuff. You'll also notice that this is our phase uh, in the weight room where we're doing what I call our proprioceptive phase which means we're going to be doing workouts and strength routines where we're going to have some balance on single leg activities, single arm, single legs, balance on a stability ball, um, doing things like that that force the body not only to go through the motion, but as you got these workouts that you've already put in place in our first phase, so in weeks one through four, most of that lifting is tr traditionally either hypotrophic or general strength at the very, very beginning, but usually we do our general strength in the off season. So we'll usually do our hypertrophic training um, to start off the year. And again, I know there's some people that disagree with that. I do that just as a method of teaching the athletes the movements that they're gonna build upon and make more difficult and challenging as we move through the season. Now, once again, uh, when you look at these workouts and these exercises, remember that these are not to be done um, if you can't do the other exercises that have been previously chosen in the earlier, less technically, less neurally demanding phase, you don't move those athletes up. You don't move them past what they're already doing. But we're assuming that we're dealing here with lifters that have either trained in the off season with me or returning veteran athletes. And so you'll notice we're doing some single leg stuff. We're doing some French contrast stuff and we're trying to be as much as we can you know, moving in a more difficult neurological process. Now, as I discussed on my Ask Me Anything uh, that we had last week um, after I got Zoom bombed, by the way, if any of you are planning on doing Zooms that are listening to me, do not put your Zoom publicly out on social media, ask people to come to you, digitally message you or private message you, and you give them the access code after you have vetted them a little bit. Uh, one of my friends, and he included me on this, after the last three out of four of his Zooms, they got Zoom bombed with a bunch of really horrible things and terrible comments and 
and horrible inappropriate videos and everything else. So unfortunately, this is a thing that people are doing now and have kind of ruined the ability for us to go public with a lot of our things. However, um, one of the things that we discussed in the training on that Ask Me Anything is these ideas of the really large recoveries. Now, traditionally, my philosophy is, depending on what you want to do as an athlete, um, what event you want to do, I always start with the 400. And then as the athletes reveal themselves, we either move them down to a Tony Holler system of feed the cats, or we move them up to a critical zone um, athlete that's a more of a 400, 800 athlete, or we keep them right here in this training. Now, the other thing that I do typically when we get in this phase is I will give my athletes options. So we can do workout number one up here, which is one times 500 or 450, and then four times 200 step downs, which I'll explain in a moment. Or we can do one times 450 or 350, another 300, and then three 200s. Typically, what's interesting is that athletes will choose the one that just gets it done quicker. And, they, and then we usually let the upperclassmen vote on which workout they want to do. And interestingly enough, you'll notice if you add up the volume here and you add up the volume here, it's practically the same. Now, I've given times here for the 500 and the 450, and then down here I've given times for the 200s as well. Again, if you're at home and you cannot do anything on the track, even though I'm pretty sure our track is open, um, you're not allowed to have formalized workouts. Remember, we're practicing social distancing and None of this is mandatory. This is all optional. But the tracks are open from what I've been told. But if you cannot go to the track or you don't feel safe or your parents won't let you go, I understand completely, you can still do this stuff on the sidewalks and on the roads. So again, when we're looking at these efforts, this will be some of our longest intervals we'll have all year. We don't go much higher than a, than a 500 ever in a workout. That's extremely long. And most coaches kind of think of that as maybe being detrimental um, to overall speed stuff. But when you have days that are focused entirely on speed, you can do this. And remember, we're still doing some sprinting and mini bursting and acceleration runs in the warm up as well. Um, so anyway, you can do that on the roads. Now, the, the recovery is really important. If you're going to give me that 95% effort over these time allotments, depending on your ability set, okay, you really got to have the right amount of recovery. Even if you feel like you're going to go and you know, oh, I'm ready to go. I'm not tired anymore. If you want this to be right, if you want this to do what it's supposed to do for this particular event in this particular discipline, then you've got to make sure that you're giving yourself the proper recovery. Now, something you can do in the middle of your recovery, again, which I talked about in my last Zoom, is that you can do some short bursts, some 20 or 30 meter runs in between these 15 minutes to give yourself a little bit of a boost. What science has shown and research has shown when you do some short, non-exhaustive miniature sprints in the middle of your recovery break, it actually helps that next rep be faster and uh, more quality. Now with the step downs, with the step downs, what we're doing here is we're gonna start off pretty slow and then we're gonna pick up speed. Now the reason why I typically do this step down workout on a Monday after spring break is because kids might be stiff, they're gonna be really tired from these two efforts. And this is a big jump in in terms of our volume for the week, and they may not be ready for this. So oftentimes what we'll do is we'll throw in the step down, so then it gives them a little bit longer of a break after that second 450, where they're not expected to go really fast for the first rep, and then we pick up our intensity and pace as we move forward through the reps of the 200. The other thing you have to keep in mind is, is that I typically do not ask my um, rookies to do a complete workout like this, They'll typically do less 200s. So here where we have four, they might do two. And here where we have three, they might do one. And then they'll be expected to do the first two big banger intervals up here. So that's kind of how we handle that. Then moving down to here, um, you'll notice that we're starting to add in some weights and stuff to um, our jumping to make it more explosive, to make it more um, loaded up. We're adding things there as well. We're adding a little bit of volume in our approaches. Our skill is to target the, um, the, the box so that we're not jumping over the line. And we want to make sure we're hitting our target and we're steering to, to that correctly. Also, you notice I've moved in our medicine ball routines. 
um, where we're going to start moving those to the front because we want those to be neurologically stimulative. So we want to get the body prepared for the jumping action and be explosive before we go through and start doing our drills and, and all the things that we have here. Um, you'll notice I have a strength routine for my jumpers as well. And then distance runners, this is going to be our tough distance run of the week. Now, an endurance mile can be done anywhere. That's considered like a warm-up. But this is one of those traditional um, Jack Daniels, Dr. Daniels running formula fartlicks. So we're going to go six times 200 fast, and then we're going to have a break that's the same for slow. So you're going to be running a total of six laps. Half of the lap will be fast. Half of the lap will be slow. Then the same thing for the 800. You're going to run an 800, you know, very fast, and then you follow it up with a slow 400. So you're going to have three 800s with a 400 slow recovery in between. Now, the other thing you can do, and you can do this on grass at a park, you can run your repeat thousands and repeat 200s with 400 and 200 meter active recoveries in between. Again, this is something you can do in a park. If you're confused at how much time you need to give yourself, I would say for the 400 recovery, it should be about half the time that it takes for you to finish a thousand. And I think that that's a good enough recovery pace. So whatever it takes you to do for the thousand meter interval, okay, you follow it up with about half that time in between. And then for the 200s, if you want to do those on a track, you can, or you can do these in the park and then just follow the same methods that we've talked about up here, run for this amount of time, okay? And then when you want to have a break in between here for that amount of 200 suggested time right there at the pace, what you can do then is followed up with a double timed recovery. So if we move up to here, what the 200 should look like, if you're going to run for 36 seconds on a repeat 200, which is pretty much what a distance kid can do in a workout like this with all this active recovery built in, <clears throat> then what you would do is you'd probably come back in like 110, which is going to be pretty darn slow. And then our untrained kids are down here, okay? And that's going to be um, a much smaller workout for them. But you choose either this or you do this. And again, we've got our distance weight room routine in there as well. And uh, you can run a course for cool down. And typically after a workout like this, you probably need at least 800 meters to a mile of a cool down after you're done. If you're not on the track and you can't run our JV course, that's what you're expected to do. All right. Now, the quote of the day is quality is not an act. It's a habit. So the idea here is, guys, is that you want to make sure that your efforts are strong and that you're getting something in all the time. And the habit of quality work is really, really, really important, okay? It's not something you just go through. It's something that becomes something that is you. You become that. It is virtuous to work consistently. Aristotle talked a lot about virtue and how important it is to go out there and to take care of your body, to be healthy, to be strong. And that may seem selfish, but think about how you being healthy and you being strong puts you in a better headspace and how you can be a better family member, a better friend, a better boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, whatever. Okay. And it allows you to bring yourself forward to everyone else all the time, let alone you being an example to you know, your friends and neighbors, and you don't realize how much you inspire people by just getting out there and working. When somebody sees you and today is a gorgeous day, it is absolutely beautiful. And so when your neighbors see you guys out there working out and doing your thing, that inspires them. Them That makes them feel good. That makes them believe in the possibilities. And you know what? It motivates them to get outside, which is really, really exciting and a really positive thing. All right. Now, philosophically, the reason why we do this work on a Monday is because we've just had um, upwards to three days to four days of recovery. So we're going to have a big workout that's pretty hard. And one of the things we got to talk about, too, is that typically our hard days need to be hard, which means that if you can, the hard run also should be followed by a hard lift day, because if you can do both on the same day, then tomorrow will be lighter and more of a medium type workout. Wednesday, complete active recovery. And then Thursday, we hit it hard again, but in a different way. 
and we do weights and then we come back on a saturday and lift weights again you want your hard days to be hard you want your easy days to be easy and so we want to make sure that we're not running hard this day and then tomorrow we lift and totally blow our legs out and then can't do anything and then wednesday we're still trying to recover from the two days we want to make sure that the monday when we've had complete rest and we've had upwards to three to four days of complete rest we want to get after it and then make sure we follow it up with the proper recovery okay now that being said i want to show you guys um, some of our lift routines because when we're looking at some of this stuff now i know that some of you guys don't have weights at home so there's only so much that you can do but i think it's important for you guys to see this routine because this can give you some ideas of some things you can do to spice up your workouts um, this is what we call our ballistic strength phase so here fap means fast as possible at the top so here we're trying to lift our reps we're no more we're no longer concerned with the weight on the bar we're more concerned with the speed of the bar and then down here we have a ballistic bench press now if you can't bench because you don't have access to this then what you do is you replicate the same theme the same goal which is fast as possible or explosion down here and you do it with a push-up so we're going to go bang 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 really fast with a push-up or and we we basically say okay i got 15 reps how long does it take me to do 15 reps let's see if i can set a personal record on doing 15 reps as fast as i possibly can in uh push-ups or down here you can do jumping push-ups some people like to jump and clap or you can just push off and then get your hands off the ground and then catch yourself again. Both of those are options that you can do to model these things, even if you don't have a weight set at home. So you'll see the bar is actually leaving his hands on the bottom there. See that there's actual space underneath his hands. And these videos are tied up, so he actually can bench this much faster at the top, but uh, the videos were synced, but you get the idea. Move the bar as fast as you can or explode off the ground with the bar. All right. Now, if you have a medicine ball, awesome. If you don't have a medicine ball, even if you have a basketball or something that you can throw that will bounce really hard and just be quick and be explosive, it's always good. A medicine ball obviously is better. Sandbag would work as well. And that's something you can do in your basement if you've got a concrete wall in a basement at home. Um, you know, you can do it off that you can bend over and force it down explosively to the ground if you have a medicine ball uh, and explode it into the ground. Now, also, same idea here. We're going to squat <clears throat> and we're going to squat as fast as possible. If you don't have a squat bar or a squat rack, Again, if you have a dumbbell or you have an object that you know you can lift safely and cradle it in your arms into your chest, you can lift this and with a split squat like this. So you got one foot in front and one foot in back. And then on your next set, you would switch it up. So you'd bring the other foot. So right now he's got his right leg up. You'd bring your left leg up and then bring your right leg back. So you want to make sure you balance things out. But again, you can do this as fast as you possibly can. And even if you don't have weight, or there's nothing you can lift safely, just the body weight squat action rapidly is going to benefit you. And so he's moving the bar fast. He's got that split squat. And again, the split squat is a pretty safe thing to do. We're not worried about keeping our heel down, but we do want our front heel and our front foot down, but the back one's going to move. Now, again, most of us don't have a bar at home. That's okay. Even if you had a medicine ball um, or, again, you have hand weights, you can do this action with, a hand, with hand weights and just move the weights. If you have hand weights right here and not worry about, obviously, having a bar, but you can put the dumbbell here, the dumbbell here, and then still replicate the same motion. And then switch, switch. This is tough to do. So she's going to do it a couple times. Boom. Switch. Switch even with dumbbells, even doing it without dumbbells and just exploding up like that is a cool thing. And you can do this in your basement. You can do this in your home. You can do this on your diet well.
All right, the next one, if you've got dumbbells, you can do this. What we're going to do is we're going to do hammer curls as fast as possible, and then we're going to pretend that there's a speed bag. You guys have probably seen this in boxing movies, um, but we don't have a speed bag here, but you can replicate the same motion. I know this seems goofy, but this is some fun stuff that you can have done at home that can keep your workouts interesting and exciting and fun to do. And what we're trying to do here is just get that neurological system to fire as fast as possible after a big, powerful movement. And that actually is very, very tiring. Now, this is a very controversial lift. This is not something I'm going to ask you to do. Okay. Instead, what I'd rather you do um, instead of having a bar is we just want to explode and jump up onto a bench or some steps that you could safely jump up onto at our house. If you want to put hold a weight here and cradle it on your chest, you can do that. But we're not going to power clean and explode up. This is a pretty um advanced movement and um something that we only do with our advanced lifters now again you can take dumbbells and be explosive here we're going to do an overhead press but these dumbbells are actually going to jump out of the hand at the top and you're going to catch them and bring them back down and if you're not comfortable with the advanced model you guys can still just do the overhead press and bend down and then explode up. It gives you a nice full body kind of workout. And then this one is similar to what we showed you before. And this is something you can do again without a bar and it's already gonna be tough. If you've got a weighted vest, great. If you can cradle something in your arms like a plate or a tire or something that's a little bit weighted, you can put that on the front of your chest if you don't have a bar to put on your back and you can hold it and you can do these same actions. And again, we're trying to overcome a load and be explosive simultaneously. So we're trying to blend both ends of a track and field athlete's body. Now, this is a fun one. If you have a dumbbell at home or a medicine ball or something heavy, have your partner sit on your toes. We're going to do sit-ups. And then in the hand, we're going to slam the weight forward without crushing our partner, but swing it forward explosively and then stretch back out and then do it again. This is very tough, even though it doesn't look that tough. And again, a medicine ball, a dumbbell, something heavy works great. And if you don't have a partner, if you can find some place to hook your toes underneath and then like have an, a target in which you're trying to go after or just bring it forward, you know, just above your toes to finish is always good too if you don't have a partner because we're practicing social distancing. This is a great activity. Some of our uh, cross country kids already do this as a general strength activity. Loading the bar up, believe it or not, um, having the bar helps you kind of balance this a little bit. Again, this is something you can do without a bar and just do it with a medicine ball or do it with a dumbbell. And then what you do is you hold the dumbbell at the head, the top of the head, and then let the other head drop and you bring it down to the ground as far as you can. And then we want to keep our back nice and flat. See how she's keeping her back nice and flat and balanced on one leg. And we're not toe tapping the other leg until we're done with the set. Overhead medicine ball slam. So again, if you've got something you feel comfortable throwing down hard into the ground, that will bounce up. Even if you don't have something that bounces up, but you've got a place in your yard, you're not afraid to throw something heavy down into um, and it won't break. You know, like if you have a big rock at home, I know that sounds ridiculous, but if you do, you know, you can throw it down and then grab it and pick it up and slam it down again. And again, what we're working on here is firing into the ground and forcing those arms to go all the way through the hip, the knee and the ankles. OK, all the way from the top to the bottom. And so believe it or not, if I took him and I put him this way, you would see that kind of push and explosion that we'd like to see in that first couple steps of acceleration. And we're trying to pull and it also we want to keep our core tight and really whip it from the core as well <laughs> now this is a fun one again if you're afraid to use a medicine ball <clears throat> just using a soccer ball or a basketball is a really really good activity um and again this is an isometric activity where we're loading up the hamstrings the butt the abdomen and uh, also the hip flexor here, and you would do this with one leg up here, and then you would switch it after about 10 to 15 reps and then do the other leg. Um, this can be 
<clears throat> thrown at you in a variety of different ways because obviously I have to target her from a distance. So you can basically just stand above and have him catch it and throw it up to you. Stand above and have him catch it and throw it straight up. Or you can do the more advanced version, which is what we're doing here where I'm going over the leg and she's thrown back to me. It's really tough and it loads that hamstring up. If you have a sit-up machine at home, awesome. If you don't, you can still have somebody sit this leg up and then you can do these with this leg cocked up and uh, have them hold this leg. This is really tough to do and really loads up that hip flexor and the lower abdomen. And then the final thing is reverse. This is kind of like the Rocky Balboa exercises. And again, you could grab the bottom of your bed frame, uh, have somebody sit backwards on a chair where they're kind of facing this way and the legs of the chair are going down here in the back of the chair. And you can go up. This is definitely something you can do at home and you should do. It's a great abdominal and explosive activity. Single leg, good morning. Again, even if you don't have a weight to put on your back, you can clinch and hold something up here in your front that's heavy, whether it's a medicine ball, a plate, a dumbbell, or something heavy, and then you make sure that you're keeping your back nice and flat, leg is straight, and then the other leg is down. This is really good for your backside. And then hamstring machine. So if you have this, obviously this is great. But if you don't have this, the second part of this workout is also something you can do if you have a medicine ball at home or a weighted ball of some kind. And again, mix and match the things that you can do. And if you can't do that, then continue to do some of the Swiss stability ball activities that we have, the, where that stability ball really works the hamstrings and the glute. And then you can do the other one where you're driving the knee up, which I showed you in a previous video. So we roll the medicine ball. Now, this is a really heavy medicine ball, and we're flicking it at the end, again, to get that hamstring strong at the very far end. And you can see she's kicking that thing up to me very powerfully, so be careful you're not getting kicked in the face when you're doing it. But that's an awesome exercise as well. So even if you can't do all of the exercises that we have, mix and match and try to do the things that you can get done best. Um, so... As we move forward, we're going to talk more and more about these different workouts, and I'm going to try to bring you something every day that's unique and different, and make sure that you guys are trying to do your best to get the things done that we have on the map. Keep working. Keep training. It's good for your biorhythms. It's good for your balance. It's good for your mental health. It's good for the mental health of all of those around you, and thank you so, so very much for sharing that video this morning, ladies that are on my track team about why you love track and field. And all the shout outs you gave me and everything like that. You have no idea how much that makes your coach happy and brightens his day. And I hope that I can reward you back with, you know, being in the best shape of your life and having a good positive body image and positive attitude and everything that you guys deserve because you're such wonderful kids. I love you so very much. Um, for the rest of those guys out here that are listening that aren't part of my track team, my kids made an awesome you know, why I love track and field video today. It's so special. Um, if any of you have questions, comments, or concerns, please put that in the comment box for me. Um, if you got ideas or suggestions that you want to share with me, please let me know. Um, I'd love to chat or rap about this. This is what I believe my purpose is in life is to help people achieve their goals and become the best them that they can be both academically and athletically. All right, guys, I love you. Till next